Hello and welcome back to this, the second part in our tutorial series on linear workflows in RenderMan Studio. Now hopefully most if not all of you have actually watched the first tutorial which was covering the theoretical background for what we're doing now and you're convinced that linear workflows are the way to go. In most modern VFX pipelines they certainly are and you will find yourself getting into all kinds of trouble if you don't actually understand what's going on here. So linear workflows make everything work more smoothly, not just in producing renders which are more consistently correct, but also in terms of when you're working with compositing. Okay, so there are many advantages to them and it is definitely the way to go. Hopefully as well, most of you will have had a look at some of the documentation which I recommended. Now, the documentation, the two sites which I particularly like on this topic are Renderman University, the article by Leif Pedersen on linear workflows, which you can go to go to Renderman University and just do a search in the search box here for linear workflow, you'll find it. And the second site is the website maintained by John Habel, um, where he discusses quite a lot of things to do with games, but in this case it's linear space lighting um, and John Habel was the first person who raised linear workflows to my consciousness when I was at GDC several years ago and it's a very good ex explanation as well. Most of you will find you read it one way it makes a certain amount of sense you read some more information about it it'll make a different sort of sense and it will eventually seep into your brain and you'll start to understand it. I even struggle with some of the concepts behind it still but the more I read and the more I explain the easier it gets for me. Okay. So, the first tutorial covered the background and the theory behind linear workflows. The rest of these tutorials are actually going to cover the practical aspects of how you implement it in rendering, in your scenes, in your workflow, within Renderman and within Maya. Okay. To do this, I'm going to set up a very simple scene and you may be not at all surprised to see that I'm actually going to work with a plane and some spheres. It's where I start out most things, so just make a simple plane. Let's um, hit 5 to actually see what's going on. Let's make a sphere somewhere in the centre, not too fussed if it's absolutely in the centre. Make it a radius of 2. And let's move it up 2 units so it's sitting on the plane. This may not even come into its own in this tutorial, but just so you know what I'm going to be working with. So let's uh, copy that uh, four times. So it's selected. Control D. One, two, three, four. Let's move these out. One, two, three, four. There are all of our objects. Okay. And let's just put a render man material on these. We'll add different materials as we go through. Starting off, I'm going to work mostly with matte materials for these tutorials, um, just so we don't get distracted by anything else. So let's just put a matte material on all of them, so they have something there. Okay. Let's see, has that actually worked? It's just taking its time to think about this. It's the first time we've initialized Renderman in this scene, so it may take a second or two. There we go. Has actually done it. It's just starting up the random and plugins in the background, so that takes a little bit of time. Let me just close off this from a previous session. I'm going to, oops, yes, delete that. Okay. Now, as I mentioned at the end of the first tutorial, what I want to do is to actually work from the end of this pipeline, the end of the rendering pipeline. Let me see if we've got it here. The output file image stuff here. The reason why I'm doing this, the output here and the viewer, I want to actually correct my viewing so that the images I'm seeing on my screen and the images you're seeing on your screen have a gamma correction from all of the work that's been done inside Renderman is being done in a linear fashion. Okay, So I want to actually display them again correctly on our screen. If we don't actually put this in first, then everything we do beforehand will be skewed somewhat. It'll still be working, and then we can put the correction at the end, but I just find it easier 
to correct the viewer first, and then we can work backwards to actually show how we correct the inputs. It's my personal preference. You may like it, you may hate it. Hopefully you like it. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, let's remember there are two different ways in which we can actually have rendered output. Well, at least two different ways. If we have a look at our render button here in RenderMan, okay, we can use the render view within Maya, or we can use it. Most people, by default, will be starting off with the render view in Maya. Okay, I've just got default lighting here at the moment, so I'm going to quickly render the scene. Okay, and this is what it looks like, which is to be expected. Now, again, I'll refer you back to uh, the article in Renderman University, and under outputs, the second part of it here. What we want to set up is we want to set up to have floating point HDR, and more important still, we want to actually have linear sRGB and sRGB here. This is telling RenderView that the image which is being rendered within Renderman is a linear image and our display profile is sRGB and it knows how to do the calculations to fix things past that. Okay, It knows what needs to be done. So let's go to display, color management, and we get our window opening here. So the image color profile that's being input, that's coming into the image viewer, is actually linear. And you see things have brightened up there slightly. And the display color profile is sRGB. So our image here, our screen, responds correctly to sRGB format. Okay. This is cool, quite easy to do. Now the second way in which we can actually render, let's just zoom in here a little bit. Um, we can render using the image tool from Renderman, from Pixar, as our render viewer. Okay, so I'll just go render here, and we shall probably see, here it is opening up here, this is the image tool. Now this appears to be exposed the same way, or have this equivalent gamma applied to it. And the reason for that is by default, out of the box, all RenderMan is set up to work in this way. So we have a look at our preferences, and we have a look at view, or sorry, we have a look at display compensation, my bad. So the default image mapping is considered by default to be sRGB. So that's the screen should have sRGB. Okay? So this is how we set up either way setting up the render view or setting up it should be set by default to be correct. Now we'll have a look at doing some more stuff with outputs later on, but just get this into your head that it will be by default correct. If you want to use render view, which you're quite happy to do. Make sure you set your display options, color management, have it set so that the input is sRGB and display color is, sorry, your image input is linear sRGB and your display is sRGB. Okay, so we'll leave it here for the moment.